the late 1940s and early 1950s were decisive years for India, a newly independent nation. While certain leaders were busy charting the country's economic policies and growth, others were formulating policies that focused on the people's reproductive health, a concept encompassing total well-being in all aspects of reproduction including physical, emotional, behavioral and social. These policies led to the establishment of the Family Planning Association of India in 1949. In 1951, the government launched a series of action programs and plans called Family Planning. This move catapulted India into a select group of countries that had chalked out a national family planning program. Later in 1997, the government initiated the reproductive and child health care programs that focused on creating and spreading awareness about various reproduction related aspects such as contraception and infertility as well as providing and supporting facilities Government, along with family planning experts, is continuously chalking out strategies to address the latest challenges arising in reproductive health. For instance, people in rural India still don't have access to information relating to sex and reproduction. Hence, various governmental and non-governmental agencies have been roped in to propagate information. Experts associated with family planning have also realized that today's youngsters depend on the internet as well as other sources including movies, friends and magazines to learn about sex related aspects. However, information gathered from these sources may or may not be reliable. Moreover, at times, the information can create myths as well as misconceptions and even unhealthy attitudes towards sex-related aspects. Therefore, these experts are advocating the need for sex education in schools. They argue that it will go a long way in imparting correct and relevant information about sex. Moreover, it will also make youngsters aware of social evils like sex abuse and sex-related crimes and the steps they need to take to fight such social evils. Experts also believe that people, especially adolescents, should be sensitized to hygienic sexual practices such as cleaning one's genitals, sexually transmitted diseases, AIDS, adolescence, and related mental and bodily changes which in turn will ensure a reproductively healthy society. Another strategy to improve reproductive health is by educating couples as well as individuals of marriageable age about birth control options, gender equality, pre and post pregnancy care, Such education will also decrease maternal as well as infant mortality rates and limit the size of families. In fact, the government had created a strategic plan for 2005 to 2009 that had five action areas, namely providing expert medical care and assistance to people on wide-ranging issues including pregnancy and delivery, STDs, abortions, menstrual problems and infertility is another step taken by the government.
government has also set up research centers that aim to find solutions to reproduction related problems. One such center is the Central Drug Research Institute in Lucknow, which is credited for developing Saheli, an oral contraceptive for women. Apart from setting up research centers, the government is also establishing hospitals and medical centers, especially in the rural areas, to provide an impetus to medically assisted deliveries as well as to provide postnatal medical care. This will help bring down maternal and infant mortality rates as well as encourage couples to have smaller families. The government is also conducting mass immunization programs to bring down the infant mortality rate. Did you know that the government has banned amniocentesis? A fetal sex determination test based on the chromosomal pattern in which the amniotic fluid surrounding the developing embryo is drawn by inserting a needle in the mother's abdomen. In this manner, the government has initiated a lot of programs and plans to build a reproductively healthy India. At the dawn of independence, India was an underdeveloped country. with its population having no access to good medical care. Life expectancy was just 32 years and infant mortality as high as 180 per thousand births. However, living conditions improved as the government built hospitals, educated people about health related issues and conducted immunization programs. These steps nearly doubled the life expectancy rate and lowered the infant and maternal mortality rate. But with the birth rate remaining more or less the same, this led to population explosion. A situation where the population of a country far outstrips its sustaining capacity. In fact, India's population which was 350 million during independence, went past the 1 billion mark in 2000, making India the second most populous country after China. Demographers fear that if the current birth rate of 1.7% is not lowered, India's natural and economic resources will be strained depriving many of even basic necessities such as food, clothing and shelter. To arrest the population growth, the government has raised the legal marriageable age of girls and boys to 18 and 21 years respectively. The government is also using the media to drive home the benefits of having smaller families. Moreover, government agencies are also actively encouraging couples to go for contraception, which is an intentional prevention of an unwanted pregnancy, through the use of contraceptive methods. Contraceptive methods can be broadly categorized as natural or traditional methods, barrier methods, intrauterine devices, oral contraceptives, injectables, implants and surgical methods. Natural methods, the oldest form of contraception, work on the principle of circumventing the chances of the sperm fertilizing the ovum. They are of three types, periodic abstinence, coitus interruptus, and lactational amenorrhea. In periodic abstinence, couples abstain from copulation during the fertile period, which occurs between days 10 and 17 of the menstrual cycle. This is when ovulation or the release of the egg occurs, 
which increases the chances of conception. Another natural method is coitus interruptus, which is also known as the withdrawal method. Lactational amenorrhea or the absence of menstruation during lactation is another natural method which works on the principle that lactating women don't menstruate for up to six months following parturition. This is because the hormone oxytocin which stimulates milk production also suppresses ovulation. Naturally, without ovulation, conception can't occur. Lactational amenorrhea, as well as other natural methods of contraception, are safe and have no side effects as there are no devices, medicines or hormones involved. However, Natural methods aren't very effective compared to other contraceptive methods such as the barrier method. This method makes use of either a condom, diaphragm or cervical or vault cap, which act as barriers to prevent the sperm and ovum from meeting. Condoms, which are available for both men and women, are made of thin rubber or a latex sheath while condoms for males are rolled over the penis condoms for women are inserted in the vagina where they block the sperm's entry into the reproductive tract by covering the cervix most couples prefer using condoms since they are cheap easily available and offer privacy as they can be self-inserted. Moreover, condoms also offer protection against sexually transmitted diseases such as AIDS and syphilis. A condom, however, can be used only once and every new coitus session requires the use of a new condom. While condoms are available for both men and women, Diaphragms, cervical caps and vaults are meant only for women. These dome-shaped barriers are made of rubber and are inserted in the vagina. Did you know that the contraceptive efficiency of a barrier can be increased by applying spermicidal creams, jellies and foams? That's because these products contain chemicals that kill sperm. Another contraceptive method is the use of intrauterine devices, commonly called IUDs. These are used by couples who want to delay pregnancy or space out their children. IUDs are tiny T-shaped devices that doctors insert into the uterus through the vagina. There are many types of IUDs ranging from non-medicated IUDs such as lipus loop to copper releasing IUDs like copper T, copper 7, multi-load 375 to hormone-releasing IUDs such as Progestacert and LNG20. Each type of IUD works on a different principle. Non-medicated IUDs, for instance, work by increasing the phagocytosis of the sperm that reach the uterus while copper IUDs release copper ions that obstruct the ascent of the sperm into the fallopian tubes as well as reduce their fertilizing ability. 
On the other hand, hormone-releasing IUDs make the uterus inhospitable for implantation by thickening the cervical mucus, which makes it impossible for the sperm to enter through the cervix. Apart from IUDs, women can also use oral contraceptives called the pill. This is a small tablet containing small doses of either progestogen or a combination of progestogen and estrogen. Progestogen thickens the cervical mucus which hinders the sperm's motility. While estrogen obstructs the pituitary gland from producing luteinizing hormone which prevents ovulation. Ideally, a woman should take the first pill of the pack within five days of the menstrual cycle and continue taking it for 21 days. During the next seven days, when the pill is not taken, the woman experiences her menstrual cycle. Following this, she needs to start taking the pill again. Progestogens alone or in combination with estrogen are also available as injections or implants that are to be placed under the skin. However, in comparison to pills, they remain effective much longer. While women have several contraceptive options, men have only two options for birth control condoms and a terminal surgical or sterilization method called vasectomy. In this case, a tiny part of the vas deferens is removed and then tied to the scrotum by bearing a small incision on the same. In tubectomy, a sterilization method for women, a minuscule part of the fallopian tube is removed and tied up through a small incision in either the abdomen or through the vagina. Both tubectomy and vasectomy are successful methods of birth control. But they are irreversible and should only be adopted if a couple wishes to have no more children. In addition to surgical methods, Couples today have several other contraceptive methods to choose from. However, before opting for a particular method, one should weigh its pros and cons and seek a doctor's advice, as some contraceptives can cause side effects such as abdominal pain and irregular menstrual bleeding. It was mid-1970s. Leslie and John Brown, a Bristol-based couple, were childless even after nine years of marriage. After visiting scores of doctors, they finally approached Dr. Patrick Steptoe and Dr. Robert Edwards. As an experiment, they would help the couple bear a child. Dr. Steptoe extracted an egg from Leslie. The egg was then mixed with John's sperm for fertilization. The fertilized egg was then placed in a special solution and allowed to divide into 64 cells. The fertilized egg, now an embryo, was placed into Leslie's uterus. Nine months later, on July 25, 1978, Leslie delivered Louise Brown, the world's first test tube baby. Louise's birth was considered a medical triumph and provided hope to many infertile couples. Couples who are unable to conceive or produce children even after two years of unprotected sexual cohabitation. Infertility can be caused by many factors, including physical and congenital reasons, 
sexually transmitted diseases, drugs, immunological or even psychological and lifestyle factors. To treat infertility, couples are often advised to visit infertility clinics where the doctors evaluate both partners to pinpoint the causes of infertility. Based on the results, the doctors may then suggest medication or surgery. For instance, if a blocked fallopian tube is preventing the woman from conceiving, then the doctor will suggest surgery to unblock it. However, when surgeries or medications fail, doctors may suggest assisted reproductive technologies or ART. ART is a collective term used for clinical procedures that are designed to help achieve pregnancy by allowing the egg and sperm to meet in an artificial environment, usually a laboratory. Today, there are several types of ART available for infertile couples, including in vitro fertilization, intrauterine transfer, zygote intrafallopian transfer, gamete intrafallopian transfer, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, and artificial insemination. In vitro fertilization, or IVF, which was used to treat Leslie Brown, is a process in which the egg is fertilized by the sperm outside the woman's body and under simulated conditions created in a laboratory. IVF is also called a test tube baby program. Interestingly, the gametes can be collected from the partner or a donor. Once the egg and sperm are collected, they are placed in a dish for fertilization and incubated together to form an embryo. IVF is followed by embryo transfer or ET where the embryo is transferred to the uterus using a tube called a catheter. Apart from IVF, couples can also opt for intrauterine transfer or IUT. In this method, embryos formed by fusion of gametes inside a healthy woman's body or in vivo fertilization are removed through surgery and transferred into the uterus of the woman who wishes to conceive. Another option available for infertile couples is zygote intrafallopian transfer or ZIFT. This process is similar to IVF where the gametes are collected and the egg is fertilized in the lab. Post-fertilization when the zygote contains more than eight blastomeres, the doctors create a small incision in the abdomen using a fiber-thin tube called a laparoscope. The zygotes are then transferred to the fallopian tube through the laparoscope. Interestingly, a laparoscope is also used in another ART called gamete intrafallopian transfer or GIFT, in which a healthy egg from a donor is placed inside the fallopian tube of the woman who wishes to conceive. GIFT is performed when the female partner has a non-functioning ovary but her uterus and fallopian tubes are in a healthy condition and capable of providing a conducive environment for fertilization and fetal development. 
Did you know that at times a woman may not be able to conceive because of male infertility resulting from low sperm count, low sperm motility, a damaged or missing vas deferens, or the inability to inseminate. In such cases, the couple can opt for intracytoplasmic sperm injection or ICSI in which the doctor injects a single sperm into each ovum which leads to fertilization. Post fertilization the fertilized egg divides to form an embryo which is planted inside the uterus using a catheter. Apart from ICSI, artificial insemination is another option in which semen collected from either the male partner or a donor is introduced into the vagina or uterus by inserting a catheter. Hence, artificial insemination is also called intrauterine insemination or IUI. Artificial insemination as well as other ARTs are helping infertile couples realize their dream of becoming parents. However, one should remember that these methods are expensive as they require highly qualified doctors as well as expensive instruments. Pregnancy is one of the most wonderful experiences for a woman. However, if one gets pregnant as a result of rape, casual, unprotected coitus, or failure of contraceptives used during coitus, it could turn out to be a harrowing and distressing experience. Under such circumstances, many women opt for medical termination of pregnancy or MTP, also called induced abortion. MTP is the intentional or voluntary termination of pregnancy before full term by expulsion of the fetus from the mother's uterus. Doctors might also recommend MTP if a woman is suffering from serious medical conditions such as heart diseases or blood pressure because continuation of pregnancy could prove fatal to her. MTP is also advised if there is a possibility of the child being born with severe physical or mental disability. Estimates show that nearly 40 to 50 million women opt for MTP every year worldwide. And in India, this figure averages 6.7 million every year. However, when India was a newly independent country, the laws concerning abortion were restrictive and abortion was permitted only if the continuation of pregnancy could prove fatal for a woman. Things started changing during the late 50s and 60s. When demographers raised concerns about India's spiraling population, they started pressing for liberalization of abortion laws which they thought could help lower the birth rate. The demographers' calls for liberalization of abortion policies found support from doctors who were alarmed by rampant illegal abortions. To address the situation, the Indian government formed the Shantilal Shah Committee in 1964. Acting on the recommendations of this committee, the Indian government passed the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act 1971 that paved the way for liberalized abortion laws. The MTP Act states that an abortion can be carried out only by an approved doctor. Moreover, while the opinion of one qualified doctor is sufficient, for pregnancies of up to 12 weeks. For pregnancies of more than 12 weeks but less than 20 weeks, 
The certification of two approved doctors is essential to conduct an abortion. This is because an abortion of up to 12 weeks of pregnancy is far less risky than one carried out for a pregnancy of more than 12 weeks. However, abortions of pregnancies beyond 20 weeks are prohibited under the MTP Act unless the pregnancy poses a threat to the mother's life. The MTP Act has made it easier for women to opt for medical termination of pregnancy. However, experts claim that illegal abortions, including sex-selective abortions and abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy, are on the rise. To reverse this trend, people are being educated about gender equality as well as the health hazards associated with illegal abortions. They are also being educated about how to avoid pregnancies by using contraceptives such as condoms and the pill. Condoms can also protect young people from a plethora of diseases and infections such as gonorrhea, syphilis, genital herpes, chlamydiasis, genital warts, trichomoniasis, hepatitis B and HIV. Collectively known as sexually transmitted diseases or STDs or venereal diseases or reproductive tract infections, these diseases are contracted through sexual contact. Incidentally, Certain diseases such as hepatitis B and HIV can also be transmitted by sharing injection needles and surgical instruments used by infected persons, blood transfusion or from an infected mother to the fetus. Different STDs are caused by different pathogens. Chlamydiasis and gonorrhea, for instance, are bacterial infections. Trichomoniasis, on the other hand, is caused by a microscopic one-celled protozoan called Trichomonas vaginalis. Whereas HIV, the most dangerous of all STDs, is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus or HIV. In most cases, People suffering from STDs show symptoms such as itching, fluid discharge, swellings in the genital region, as well as pain during sexual intercourse. However, the symptoms aren't always obvious. In fact, most people don't show any symptoms of infection during the early stages of the diseases. Moreover, when symptoms become obvious, people avoid seeking medical opinion for fear of being stigmatized. One should however not forget that timely detection and appropriate treatment can make a person completely free of most STDs. However, there are a few exceptions like hepatitis B, genital herpes, and HIV infections that cannot be cured. Moreover, timely detection is the key to prevent STD-related complications such as pelvic inflammatory diseases, abortions, stillbirths, infertility, or even cancer of the reproductive tract. Did you know that STDs, which are widely prevalent in people who are aged between 15 and 24, can be prevented if one takes simple precautions such as using condoms and avoiding sex with unknown or multiple partners? 
we are responsible for our own health and simple things such as the use of condoms can keep STDs at bay.